Well, Razorback fans, it's been a long time, but we are back on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. So let's talk about what's going on with this Razorback basketball team, shall we? You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of the John Neighbors Show here on Natty State Sports, which you can follow everywhere on social media, Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing with you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at JaceMedical.com. That's J-A-S-E Medical.com. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Uh, I guess it's going to be technically a Tuesday. And I know it's been a long time, Razorback fans. I know it's been a long time. We'll talk about that and reasons why. But we're back. We're back and have plenty of things to discuss here on the podcast today, especially when it comes dealing with the Arkansas Razorback basketball team. Now, here's the thing. For those of you, I mean, I kind of feel bad because I really haven't had a chance to talk much about it, at least not in depth in the way that I wanted to talk much about it. There's been issues. I think we all can see that. We can all appreciate that. Doesn't mean you have to enjoy it, but it's certainly there. And it's certainly a problem. And when I saw what Arkansas did this past Saturday against Florida and even against Georgia and even against Auburn, what I've seen is nothing short of scary. It's a scary thing. Because let's be honest, Arkansas and the season that they're having so far this year is surprising to everyone. There's nobody that you can talk to and take seriously that has said, you know what, I thought this was about to happen. I thought this was going to happen to the Razorback basketball team. I just had a sense, had an idea, had a feeling that it was all going to turn out this way because it's just not true. It's not true. And it's worrisome. I have always been someone who likes to play it out a little bit when it comes to basketball seasons, especially because I know that we've seen it in previous years, time and time and time again, where this basketball team has figured it out. You know, we don't have to go through the history itself all throughout it and just really jump into all the things that we could say we told you so about or things that we've been wrong about, you know, whatever it may be. But we've seen it time and time again, especially under Eric Musselman, where they've just got it figured it out. But this year just feels different, right? It feels like a different type of struggle, a different type of bad play. There's a bad vibe. Because even in the times where they struggled in the beginning of SEC play especially, there was at least some consistencies that you could count on. You could count on the defense a little bit. You might be able to count on a particular player getting a certain amount of points. Maybe a couple of players getting a certain amount of points. You could count on the game being close, game being hard fought. There's things that you could count on, even if you lost, and at the end of the day, L still count as L's no matter what. But there were still some things that you could at least count on. But right now, there is nothing about this team that I would have any sort of confidence in predicting. You know, they play Texas A&M tonight in Bud Walton Arena. Texas a and is a good team. They're coming off of a nice win against Kentucky at home. There is nothing that I can look at in the game as individuals or as a team where I'm going to be like, I'm going to bet on that to happen. You know, I'm going to bet on this particular player to get this amount of points. I have no idea. You know, Caleb Battle, Tremont Mark, those have been guys that have really put up some incredible numbers at times this year, especially in points in random games. But if you told me that Caleb Battle and Tremont Mark were going to get two points tonight, I wouldn't be surprised. But if you told me they were going to go for 20 apiece, I wouldn't be surprised. If you told me that Trevin Brazil was going to go for... 14 and 10 tonight. Wouldn't be surprised. But if you told me that he was going to have two points and four rebounds and get in foul trouble, I wouldn't be surprised. And we can just continue to go down and down and down the list 
over and over and over again. We could, we could do all, this all day long. And I would still come to the same conclusion where it's like, I have no earthly idea. I have no idea. But what I do at least count on right now, and until proven otherwise, is that Arkansas is going to lose the basketball games. They're going to lose this game against Texas A&M. I hope I'm wrong. I'd like for them to win. I'd like for them to give some sort of confidence or some sort of feeling, something to Razorback fans in general that can make them believe that this team is actually going to put it together. That's really what comes into play. They got to provide something. Because right now, we ain't getting anything. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing out of them. I hope it changes. I hope it gets fixed. But seriously, if you're a logical person, which I think most of you are for all intents and purposes, but if you're a logical person, I mean, think about it. Where, where can you find the hope into this? Because we've seen almost every single player on this roster, at least the ones that actually contribute significant minutes, have moments, have games, have stretches where they looked really good. I mean, Jermon Mark and Caleb Battle were two guys that we mentioned. Tre Trevin Brazil we've mentioned. We've seen it from Devo Davis. We've seen it from guys like a Chandler Lawson even. Have great stretches of games. We've seen Layden Blocker have, have some moments. Keon Minifield have some moments. Even L. Ellis, where it seems like he's on a milk carton right now. Can't really see where he's at. We've seen him have moments, have games. We've seen it. But the problem is, is that we just never know when it's going to happen. It's like Haley's Comet. It's like it's few and far between. We never know when it's going to happen. Maybe not Haley's Comet. Like maybe a shooting star. You get what I'm saying. It's unpredictable. We just never know when it's going to happen. So I feel for the fans out there, for the Razorback fans. I really do. And I will continue to make sure that everyone is clear. I hope this gets turned around. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that they get it going in ways that they have always got it going before, and it all works out according to plan. I really, really, really hope that happens. But until it does, this is not an NCAA tournament team. I don't even know if this is an NIT team right now, folks. I hate to be that guy, but it's true. And most of you will be upset, rightfully so. You may freak out a little bit. Maybe rightfully so there, too. But here's my little explanation. I'm not defending it. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's okay. But here's, just hear me out on this. Every single program in basketball and in college basketball has moments and times like this. Each time and each time it comes around, they are going to have a year where things just don't go right. Kentucky's had it. North Carolina's had it. Duke's had it. Kansas has had it. I'm not trying to compare Arkansas to those programs necessarily. But I am saying that all of these programs, which are high-level blue studded, what is it, blue, I don't want to say blue collar, uh, but blue-blooded programs at least, all of them have had these moments in these seasons. So maybe this is just Arkansas. Maybe this is just the year where you felt good going into it. You felt good about what had been done. You felt good about the history and you felt good about the future. But maybe this is just that year where it just doesn't go right. You mix it up. You know, maybe Eric Musselman learns a lot from this. Maybe Razorback fans learn a lot from this. Maybe some of the players learn a lot from this. But it's just really unfortunate to see what's happened. It's really unfortunate to see what's happened and what continues to happen. And hopefully there's something on the horizon that'll make it better. But until that point happens, this is what we got. <laughs> Most people have already turned the page to baseball season, which I can get, I can understand, but... Still ways to go. 
Prove me wrong, Razorback fan, uh, Razorback basketball. Prove me wrong. I will happily, happily admit it. Maybe. Folks, the NFL regular season is wrapped up. We're already in the playoffs, if you can believe it. And there's still some time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's it, just a $5 bet. And when you're talking about $150, win or lose, it's hard to beat. And the app is so easy to use with FanDuel because there are many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, best way, of course, to get the popular parlays that are out there, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. It's FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I didn't want to turn this into some sort of like negative podcast itself, but there has been a lot of things that's happened. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, maybe some small things that have happened in the Razorback football program that we haven't really had a chance to talk about because, again, this – and I'll explain it in the in the final segment of the podcast because I don't want to bore everybody with that. Uh, but, you know, with the Razorback football, it's been all too quiet, it almost feels like. All too quiet. And it gives maybe some people a good feeling when it is quiet, considering the craziness that's gone on with college football. You know, Nick Saban retired for crying out loud. I can feel like so out of it when I didn't even get to talk about that. Nick Saban's retired. You have, of course, in the NFL, like Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll leaving their jobs too. But anyways, football itself has been pretty shook. And we're trying to kind of catch up a little bit. But with Arkansas football, it's just been quiet. You've had a few players added here and there out of the transfer portal. You've had a few things change up a little bit. But overall, it is what it is. But I keep having people throughout really just going out and about people coming up to me and asking about certain things with Razorback football, you know, diff- different things and different approaches. But overall, people are just like, how are we going to be? How are we going to be in football? What's going to be like? Is it going to be okay? Is it going to be good? Man, I ain't th- I think it's going to be good. It's going to be terrible. It's like these all these back and forth of people trying to figure it out. So I'm going to kind of litter it out this way. When it comes to the hope of Razorback football, where is the hope in Razorback football? It's a good question. A question that's justifiable when being asked. I think so, at least. So where's the hope? Well, folks, the hope is not high. It's just not. You know, you're coming off of a terrible year. You lost some of the players that you wanted back, although you did keep some of the players maybe you wanted back. You added Bobby Petrino, which was pretty crazy and fun, maybe exciting. But even then, it's kind of like, as great as that is, I need something else. I need something else to have happen. I need something else to feel good about. Well, <laughs> that is the ultimate question. I don't, know, I don't know what to point to at this point in time. But because I wanted to be a little bit more of a positive note, because I wanted to take it into an example of maybe where your excitement can come from, maybe you can take it from this. Arkansas has a lot riding on this season. Sam Pittman has a lot riding on this season. His job's on the line. And... The fact that he wasn't fired last season when we all felt like he maybe should have been and him kept in his job because of the Petrino hire and everything, it's like everyone knows what's on the line right now. No one's going to be surprised by it. Everyone knows what's on the line. So that being said, how do you respond when your back's against the wall? How do you respond when everything seems to be going against you in the football program itself, the biggest moneymaker, the biggest deal on campus. 
How do you respond if you're Sam Pittman on going out and taking care of business and bouncing back? Because to me, for him to keep his job, he's got to get at least seven wins, at least. I don't even think six wins does it. The schedule is extremely tough. Now, granted, you have your toughest home games. You have your toughest games at home, but it didn't matter this past year because you had your toughest game or your easiest games at home and you still lost them all. So it doesn't really matter. But if you're Sam Pittman and if you're Arkansas, where the positivity can come is the possibility that you actually learned a lot about your team this past year and you learned a lot about what not to do in some cases. And I'd even make, go out there and say that maybe you, I'm not calling anybody out specifically, but maybe some of the players that ended up leaving the program, whether going pro or transferring out or whatever, maybe that was something that was needed. A, a new start, a, re, a refresher, a new quarterback, new running back, you know, some, some new blood in there, people that have been around the program for a long time. Maybe you just needed a little bit of that. I'm not saying those guys were bad players or cancers in the locker room or anything, but sometimes you just need a change. You need a little bit of a mix-up. And to me, that's what you're going to have this year. It's going to be different. So there's not an expectation going into it of like, well, yeah, I know what this guy, this guy's going to be good. Because you know what? I knew that K.J. Jefferson was going to be good this past year and wasn't. You know, I knew that Rocket Sanders was going to be awesome, but no, I knew the offense in general was going to be just as good. You know, we all think we know things and we see things. But this year with all the new blood and the new offense coordinator, Bobby Petrino, I don't know. I just feel like there's no chance that Bobby Petrino, knowing he's got full realm of the offense, is going to have a bad offense. I just don't see that happening. So... Maybe that wasn't the answer you guys are looking for, but I'm trying, all right? I'm trying to provide some of that hope, trying to make it work for you. But I'm going to give you some updates on stuff that's been going on in my life and the reason why I've been so incognito here on the Lockdown Razor Rex podcast in just a second. But first, folks, I know we come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we just talk a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics and right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade, and that's a very scary thing. Can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if any of my family members or loved ones uh, got sick while there was a supply chain issue that kept them from getting the life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, everybody's going to be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter and it will be reviewed by a board-certified physician. And your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com, use offer code LOCKEDON, get $20 off your next order. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, so, again, I am sorry for the uh, MIA uh, behavior, me not being here. I don't know how you want to put it. I haven't done many podcasts here lately. I'll just be honest about it. And a lot of you have been letting me know about it, which is awesome because it shows how much you listen to it and, and watch it and everything. But... For those of you who know, I've started a new media company called Natty State Sports, and that's actually where I'm doing the podcast in right now. I'm in the sixth floor of the Encore Bank building right now in my office, and yes, there's a TV on behind me or a TV that's hung up behind me. It doesn't have anything on it, but all that stuff's going to change over time. But still, it, these are things I'm just putting together and trying to make it work, and it's just been so busy. I've, I've been moving back and forth. That's another thing I got to continue to do. I got to continue to move. Find a place to live. Yeah, the, the, the snowpocalypse come in in northwest Arkansas and around Arkansas. That really caused some more issues, too. So it's just been a lot. It's been a lot. But it's going good. It's really going good, and I've been really excited about everything that's been going on with the 
new company and the people around me and, and the guys, Curtis Wilkerson, Andrew Ellis, Scotty Bordelin, all those guys have been awesome. And so we're, we're just keeping it moving. But it's really been frustrating to me to not be able to do the podcast, I'll admit. Like, it really has been. I feel like I've been out of the loop. I feel like I haven't had a chance to vent my frustrations. And it's just nice to kind of be back. And I'm going to try to continue to be back each and every day. There, there may be times where, you know, I'm going to be gone for a little bit or whatever it may be. But I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. And sometimes the podcast may be posted up at different times. You know, it may not be exactly the same time every day, but just depending on what's going on, and maybe other times too. So the point is, is just like, I want to say sorry for those that have been listening to the podcast and haven't been able to, uh, you know, hear from me because I've been gone for so much, but also to let you know that it's not going to be like this forever. Uh, it is just some that maybe through the month of January will be a little touch and go, but February comes around, settled in, everything's going to work out. Everything's going to work out just fine. So I'm excited about it. It's been going great. Today was actually the first day. Had some hiccups on the show, but nothing too crazy. You know, launch is what's going to happen. But still, we're doing some big things, folks. We're doing some big things. And hopefully everybody goes in, uh, to Natty State Sports, checks it out, the great content we're going to be posting because it's going to be awesome. And so, again, we'll keep it moving, keep it working. Can't wait to see how it all plays out. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors underscore underscore. It's not exactly easy, but it's still there. Makes it easier to at least find my name. It's N A B O R S, right? Any questions, comments, concerns you may have, we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.